All right, peoples, this is Ross. We have a pretty fun video, I think, for you guys today. At least it's fun to me. Uh, we're going to talk about my tastiest fig varieties. Now that we're sort of at the end of the season, right? 2020, the 2020 season is coming to an end now. Uh, we're approaching frost, and I've been doing some different write-ups here on the blog. I've been doing some different videos, what we have actually here in front of me is our last episode of Fruit Talk. And we talked about in uh, that particular episode, really my best fig varieties. We'd also talked about what are the varieties I'm getting rid of. So we mentioned what are the best ones and then also what are the worst ones, you know? So just to kind of have that nice little contrast. In this video, we're not gonna necessarily talk about the best fig varieties that I grow, but certainly the tastiest because Unfortunately, the tastiest variety doesn't always mean it's the best. I wish it worked like that, uh, but there's so many factors that goes into this, and especially because I live in a humid climate in the Philadelphia area, it just becomes very difficult to get figs at a high quality consistently, as we've mentioned just so many times here on the channel. But here's actually my blog, figboss.com, and we just did a, a little write-up here. Um, as it says, three hours ago. So yeah, three hours ago. Um, <laughs> and we've really got a number of varieties that I highlighted. We have some photos, really good details about the flavor. Um, I think it's pretty good. What we're going to do is kind of expand upon this particular post here on the blog. If you're interested, I'll put this particular link to the post in the description of this, uh, this video. What I would suggest if you want to see more blog posts like this, more fig related information in written form, uh, go down to the bottom of the blog and put in your email address and you guys will just get notified when I create a new blog post. So to preface this whole thing, before we get into the nitty gritty of these different varieties, it's important I think to expand upon a, a really important point, which we sort of just touched on a little bit in that just because it's the tastiest variety I grow doesn't mean it's the best. And there's a fig, let's take, let's use this as an example. There's a fig called Black Madeira. And I've done so many videos now on Black Madeira. Um, I call it the king of figs, in fact. Um, Harvey's done some videos. Uh, Lou Monty's done some videos. Everybody's done some reviews because it's just really that fig that you just have to try. You got to grow it. Um, it's got such an unanimous um, positive outlook between almost every single fig grower or fig hobbyist that's really, you know, off the deep end with these fig varieties. So a variety like that, I do think you must grow it. You must try it. Everybody should at least at one point, if they're going to take these different fig varieties serious. But as an example, you know, somebody who lives in the Philadelphia area and for probably most of us in the country that grow figs, um, we're probably not going to have a whole lot of success with this fig. And, and yes, I might get one of them or a handful of them or maybe 10 of them, I don't know, that are really, really special. Um, but in most years, at least this year, I only got one. I really enjoyed only one single Black Madeira this year. And that was with a head start of the season. Um, that was with the Black Madeira getting a head start in my greenhouse, growing it in a container. Um, and I only really got one. The rest of them, it's not like it's not a it's not a productive fig because I it probably had about 50 fruits on it. Um, the rest of them split and then fermented and then actually attracted fruit flies. And those fruit flies then you know affected other varieties and other figs I grow. So. You know, a lot of this is really dependent. A lot of these varieties are really dependent, first off, just on their genetics. Their genetics make a huge difference in how they taste and also how they perform. And figs are just highly subjected to the weather, to your climate, to your location. So if you're going to be growing, let's say, Black Madeira where I'm at, how many of the Black Madeiras are you really even going to be able to enjoy? Um, so... To me, it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense at this point. Um, if we're being really realistic, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to actually say that Black Madeira is one of my tastiest figs if 
on an annual basis, I really don't get many figs of them consistently. And also the quality is so varied, uh, varied in, in um, you know, some of them are good and some of them are bad. Probably most of them are about just an average fig. And then, re you know, really few of them are just amazing. So if I could get a Black Madeira, I think that would be consistently amazing, then I could say it is amazing. You know, then I could say it is a five out of five on the flavor scale, as an example. Um, so it, to me, it just doesn't make too much sense. And what I've done in the past for you guys is I've actually uh, fig varieties for California is I've done, you know, basically uh, videos now on YouTube about varieties that you can grow in a place like California or I would recommend in a place like California. Um, and for, you know, you guys that live in, in Southern California or whether it's, um, you know, West Texas or Arizona, um, you know, really fig conducive climate that's dry and warm you guys are going to want to focus on well really what are the best tasting figs um, not necessarily exactly how they perform because the performance side of it isn't as much of a big deal to you guys as it is for someone like me or for most people um, in the country so you got to be careful I think um, for someone like me but you guys, you could probably get away with just a lot of the varieties that I recommend in these particular videos that I've done. I actually have done two different videos now on variety recommendations for something like California. Actually, here's the other one right here. Hot, dry climates, my fig variety recommendations. So you can go through these, and if you're interested, the, these are kind of the varieties for you. But I will say that if you're in California, Without a doubt, all of these varieties I'm going to mention are extremely flavorful and certainly are going to be able to compete with some of the really high-end varieties that uh, I may not be able to get here consistently like the Black Madeira. So <clears throat> that's kind of the whole preface I wanted to mention. Now let's get into the varieties here. The Col de Dama um, is definitely, and it's been historically, my absolute favorite fig. It is the best tasting um, I love it, I love it, I love it. And it's just in the same category, I think, as Black Madeira. I think there is people who have preferences between the Col de Noms and the Black Madeira types. But unanimously, I think most fig hobbyists that are really knee-deep in the varieties highly respect the Col de Noms and highly respect Black Madeira. Um, for me, what separates the Col de Dom from any of the other figs is the texture. And it's not just, you know, something like the Greek, you know, um, it's not all the Col de Doms. Just because it has a name, I want to mention real quickly. Just because it has the name Col de Dama and then blank doesn't mean it's going to taste exactly the same. It's really all about the neck and the shape and maybe even where it originated from. Um, I think it means a lady's neck or something like that because um, it has that characteristic of the neck of the fig and it just is strikingly beautiful that way. But most of the Col de Doms, let's say Greece, Noir, Blanc, Gigantina, Mutante, Ramada, these all basically taste the same uh, with very minor differences. And the key characteristic of them that makes them so special is actually the texture. So when I talk about taste, I'm not just talking about the flavor. I'm talking about the whole eating experience. The texture is extremely, extremely important in all the foods we eat, and it's so often overlooked. Uh, but for me, that's probably one of the best characteristics in figs. I actually, if the fig has really the best texture to it or the right texture to it, I'm going to value that fig so much more than something that actually tastes, has a better flavor to it. I personally prefer the right textures above everything else. So for me, the cold Noms are number one for that, that particular reason. They have a very dense and jammy and sticky and gooey and almost cakey pulp. It's really kind of like eating a dessert, like a cake or even like a pancake um, is really how I've described it in the past. Sometimes they're so thick that it's really like eating a pancake. Um, and I really do absolutely love that particular characteristic about them. Now, because they're so amazing, because the Col de Doms are so fantastic, 
I have found, I have made it sort of a mission of mine to go out and try to find varieties of figs that are better. Uh, because unlike Black Madeira, the cold adams actually do pretty decent here in this climate. They are really quite rain resistant. They're quite split resistant. The only real issue is that they ripen a bit later in the season. You got to give them some sort of head start here. Um, otherwise, you're going to kind of struggle to get them to ripen every year. However, if you can get them some sort of season extension here, it's tough to beat them. But having said that, I do think there's something better out there. There had to have been. There has to be something better out there. So I looked and looked, and I'm still looking. And I'm trialing so many varieties that have a very thick and dense pulp to try to find something that will replace the cold adams. And believe it or not, I found something. Um, I found something that I consider to be the tastiest fig I grow. This is the number one. This actually ended up beating the cold adams now. Um, it's called De La Roca, and it comes from Montserrat Ponds in Spain, Mallorca. And as I said, it's, it's in my opinion, it should almost have the name cold adam. I mean, there isn't a whole lot of differences I see. It's a little bit smaller, I think. Um, it's got that same, almost the same cold adam neck. Um, what's sort of special about this fig is that it was grown in wherever they, wherever ponds had found this fig in Spain, it was grown in a garden, he mentions in his book. And he says in that garden, there's constantly um, some sprinklers or irrigation that's sort of running and misting the air. And therefore, the tree, he, he believes, has sort of adapted to that humid environment of having it in a garden. And uh, because of that, I believe it's I pro it's got to be true because the fig is extremely rain resistant and has really good drying capabilities. Um, it almost never splits. It doesn't crack. It's really a fantastically uh, fig that performs so well. Um, if you can just get it to ripen a little bit earlier, like the cold adams, it's extremely hard to beat. And the flavor is just far, far superior, I think, even to the cold adams. It's kind of insane. Because it has a better berry flavor to it, a better overall flavor. Um, where the cold adams sort of struggle here is that you really need to spend some time with them, get them mature, get the right soil moisture, get the right conditions for the cold adams to put out a super, super high quality cold adam. You know, ideally you got to get them to ripen sometime here in like early August is really the best time of the year to get the cold adams. And at that point, they're really hard to beat. But this De La Roca, because it sort of dries up on the tree, it really has superior drying capabilities to most other figs. Um, it just really gets to that consistency uh, that you want more often. You know, that's kind of what Black Madeira struggles at, is I may pick a handful of good figs, whereas De La Roca, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be very easy or a lot easier for it to get to that amazing state that I'm looking for. And therefore, um, when it gets to that state, it's pretty much like a dried fruit, um, but it's like out of this world good. This is kind of the fruit right here that would really give a lot of persimmons, uh, really well-ripened persimmons that I love so dearly, uh, a run for their money. And that would be like a really fair comparison, I think, is like some of the best tasting figs versus some of the best tasting astringent persimmons um so for me i think it's it's insane you know it's like uh, a cold adam that can dry on the tree has a really intense flavor because it's drying up like that you know it's got some good figgy notes in it because it is started starting to get those dried that dry consistency it even has some honey in there it's extremely sweet you can see a little drop of honey here that solidified um it's really a spectacular fig the next one here I want to mention is Smith, and uh, Smith we've talked about for years. That was sort of my, really my couple original recommendations was Azores Dark and Smith and Italian 258. And uh, Smith is just one of those figs, I think it's immortalized itself among other varieties, just like the Black Madeira, just like the Cold Adams. It's got a nice thick texture. It's not the thickest fig, but it's got a uh, good sweetness. It's got a lot of nectar in there. It's slightly acidic, and it has a nice berry flavor to it, a very strong berry flavor. And I think it's really one of the most complexly flavored figs that I grow. 
uh, when you really sit there and think about a wine or something like that and all the complex notes to it this fig here really reminds me of something that really makes you wonder and think about it um, the hate of the Argentile is a French fig that I believe is also very complex and I would actually argue that it's probably the most complexly flavored fig that I have uh, this is one of the few that has like a cherry flavor to it so in my mind it's it's acidic as well it has like an acidic bite to it. it's a little sharp um, but it it has a cherry flavor to it unlike the Smith and that cherry flavor is also accompanied by a nice berry flavor maybe you could wrap that all into one that acidic sharp berry cherry flavor to it that you just don't find really in other varieties so it's it's got a nice unique factor going for it you know some other cherry flavored figs I've had is the Cavalieri which is also a really great tasting fig and the Fico Rubato which people really highly uh, respect to me, I think it's extremely difficult to beat the Hatib de Argentile uh, for so many people. It does well in, in any climate. It's even better when it's caprified. Um, and I've heard from my friend Doug, who lives in Northern California and grows this fig in the ground. And, and uh, this is one of his favorites. It's so complex. It's so amazing. Um, takes a few years to mature. And this year, I finally got around to really realizing the amazingness of this particular variety. Um, the next one I want to talk about is Paradiso from Ciro. And there are a number of Paradiso figs. We've talked about this so many times now on the channel. We just did a review of this fig in its own little separate video. And, uh, you know, it's kind of weird how all these Paradisos are named, but I guess some people just think their figs are paradise, as they, as they really are. You know, figs are such an amazing fruit. And therefore, they sort of named them Paradiso, right? Coming from Italy. Um, I believe personally that this one is very closely, um, if not the same thing, to the Paradiso that Paolo Bologna grows in Italy, which is uh, Paolo is probably the most well-respected fig grower in Italy. Um, and if he has one called Paradiso, I'm more inclined to believe that it's probably the... Uh, the Paradiso that was also depicted in Galicio's drawings, which is um, a guy who basically uh, years ago, I think maybe a hundred or more years ago, had went around Italy and documented many of the varieties of fruits and, and drew pictures of them and, and wrote things about them and sort of put together a nice, uh, a nice book on them. And you can find that book on the internet if you guys are interested. But, you know, for me, I think... Um, when this one's perfectly ripened, when it's, uh, you know, even a bit mature, because some of the figs on my tree this year actually have not been all that mature, whereas this was a fruit from last year that really just blew me out of the way, uh, blew me out of the water, not blew me out of the way. Um, but uh, even this year, it was really spectacular. And it just kind of goes to show that it does need a little bit of time to mature because I did air layer it off its mother tree. And then I put it into a pot, and it's I think it's taking its time now to get back to its former self. But um, this one's just really, I can't say enough about this fig. It's got really a dense, cakey texture. One of the more denser varieties, like the Col de Dames. Um, even more dense, I would say, than Smith and Hatib de Argentile. It's more dense than, let's say, the Hardy Chicago types, like Azores Dark. Um you know, it's really spectacular. And, and not only does it have that really perfect or close to perfect texture, it's got a really great berry flavor to it. Um, that's really quite hard to beat. It's very sweet as well. Lots of nectar in there. Uh, highly, highly regarded fig. There's also another Paradiso, because I, I said there's a lot of Paradisos. There's one Paradiso from, uh, from Bode. And he's in France, and he's probably the uh, the biggest expert of figs in France. And this is the one that he grows, as I said. And I would say this one is probably, if I had to really just rank them all in order, I would say this one's probably number two. Um, I think De La Roca is the tastiest, and this one's probably just right behind it. Um, it really is spectacular with that cakey, thick, 
amazing, elegant. It's it's just an, I got an elegant and exquisite flavor that you really struggle to find in many figs. I mean, a lot of these figs I think have what I would consider an elegant berry flavor. You know, it's just really just exquisite. Like there's just something about it that kind of makes it like, you know, a nice wine, you know, that really whatever that is about a nice wine that kind of makes you just say, wow, you know? So for me, I think this one is probably number two. And, you know, <laughs> as a joke I wrote here, I'm certainly in paradise when eating this fig when it's perfectly ripened. The difficulty actually with this one is that it is quite difficult to actually get ripe um, perfectly because it does struggle with the rain here. So this one I almost would consider in the same category maybe as like a black Madeira, you know, um, although it ripens uh, significantly earlier. So, you know, I don't know exactly how long I'm going to keep this particular variety depending on how, uh, how it performs here in my climate. But this is a fig. I think it's just fantastic. And, and this photo here doesn't even really do it justice because I had some that were just like spectacular that I didn't photograph. And I'm telling you, um, this one's just out of this world good. Uh, the next one I want to talk about is uh, Moro de Caneva. And we've talked a lot about this fig as of recently. We've done some individual reviews on it now. Um, believe it or not, it's a commercial fig. And I, it's kind of funny because being a commercial fig, they're not always that great. They're not always that tasty. They have other good characteristics about them. But this one's really good. Um, it's got a good texture to it. Um, you know, the, the skin isn't too tough. Um, doesn't have a you know overwhelming synconium to it. The whole thing is kind of uniform and just really, really good in terms of its dense texture. Um, it's very sweet as well as a lot of these figs. Really, if they're going to impress me, they're probably going to have a higher sweetness to them. The berry flavors, I would say, is moderate on this one. But what's great about this one is it really turns into like a fig candy um, as it ripens, as it sort of starts to shrivel up on the tree. I wouldn't say this fig has drying capabilities. I would say it has shriveling capabilities. And it certainly, when it becomes shriveled, it turns into like this most amazing candy that just kind of blows you out of the, out of the water. And, and at that point, when it really gets super candy-like like that, all these other flavors come together. And I, I could probably go on and on about some of the interesting flavors if, if I'm eating them and as I'm eating them, maybe I could describe it like you would maybe some of the notes you pick up in wine, but I don't have any of these figs in front of me to uh, probably accurately say at this point. But certainly there's all kinds of wild flavors and wild berry flavors. When this fig really becomes to that candy state, it's really quite something special. Uh, and I think it can almost consistently do that. You know, it's not like that's a one out of 20 or one out of a hundred that happens like that. I think it happens pretty often. Uh, there's also here the um, De La Senora Hivernanca. And I, moving on, I guess, to something that's similar to the Black Madeiras or the Black Madeira types, is that this one I consider similar enough to a Black Madeira. I don't think it's uh, an exact match. It's actually really quite different, but out of all the figs I grow and some of the figs I like, I would say this one's one of the closest in that, you know, it's got that really awesome, amazing berry flavor to it that's really just in your face with a ton of that fig nectar and that syrup, and it's just really juicy. Not necessarily a really jammy fig, because Black Madeira really isn't really a jammy fig or a dense fig. It's, it's really quite juicy and syrupy. You know, it's got a whole lot of that nectar in it. Um, and, it, you know, I think the flavor and the overall eating experience is just rather similar to Black Madeira. I mean, sure, I'm sure, I'm sure somebody could argue that. But um, for this particular type of fig and this particular style of a fig, I almost consider this one the Black Madeira killer. We did a, a little blog entry on just, I think, this particular variety of De La Senora. We did, I believe. And... Um, you guys can check this one out here as well. I called it De La Senora, the Black Madeira Killer, because not only does it taste just as amazing 
I, it could even taste better. I'm not 100 percently. I'm not 100 percent sold on if it's worse or better just yet. But um, you know, it's got so many other things going for it that I think just make Black Madeira obsolete. You know, it just becomes a completely other than just gotten you know getting black madeira to try it and because it's such an immortalized variety i just think you know this one here is like just almost far superior uh to that fig it's got for a lot of reasons it's got like a shorter hang time it's really only three to five days you could pick it at six or seven i'm sure and i'm sure it would taste better as it ripened but you know black madeira splits quite often and this one almost never splits it's got super rain resistance and uh, I would argue it even has a better flavor. So we'll see uh, how that one does uh, in the flavor department going forward. But I'm I'm pretty convinced at this point. The other figs we have here, keep going down the list, is Azores Dark and, and Malta Black. And uh, I kind of combine them together because they are hardy Chicago types. And they do taste rather similar. But when you get them super ripe and you have a mature tree, they're actually quite different. And I would argue that the berry flavors within them is very different. Um, Azores Dark is kind of like a strawberry and a Concord grape flavor. And then Malta Black is really like a, a raspberry jam flavor. And they're, they're both really dense, um, I find. I think the Azores Dark personally is much more dense, but they both have good drying capabilities. And when they get to that dried state, any of the figs really, when they start to get dried up a bit, they'll start to turn into more of a dense, um, jammier texture to them. Um, so Malta Black's got that going for it as well. And they're, I would argue they're both very figgy as well. They have some dried fruit flavors and really what a true fig almost sort of tastes like in my, in my mind, you know. The next one here is Verdino del Nord, and we've talked just so much about this fig and how amazing it is for so many different reasons. And... It's got the be like some of the best drying capabilities um, that exist, you know. Other than Nerucciola de Elba, this one is probably number two in that category, and it doesn't take very long for it to get to that dried state. Almost all the figs here on this tree dry on the tree, and that's really saying something. That's quite difficult here. Um, it's super sweet, and if I think because it's so sweet, it's got such a high bricks, and that bricks really prevents the mold, the fermentation, the spoilage. Um, and therefore, because it gets to that dried state so easily and so quickly, um, it just has the most amazing flavor to it. It really does. It's really an elegant berry flavor that I kind of would compare to, let's say... A really well ripened um, Smith, really well ripened Azores Dark, um, a well ripened Col de Dom, a well ripened De La Roca. They they all really sort of have that similar elegant berry flavor that just really makes you go wow, you know. Um, so for me, it's it's really quite something, really quite special this fig, and um, it has a really good intense berry flavor too, which is not always so apparent in some of these varieties. You know, you can make an argument that maybe the hardy Chicago types are maybe moderately berry. You know, the De La Senora, I would say, is probably had a lot of berry to it. The Moro de Caneva is probably moderately berry as well. Even some of these Paradisos are maybe moderately berry, somewhere in the medium range, right? Where some of these other figs like Black Madeira and Verdino del Nord they just have such an intense berry flavor that really I think makes them amazing. It's it, for that reason, it's really quite complex. You know, um, I know a lot of people love that berry flavor too. So the last one here I want to mention is white Triana. And I just, we can't really forget about this fig. You know, it really is something special and doesn't get enough credit. It really, really is one of the best tasting figs I grow. Um, it just has something that none of the other figs, for the most part, can really attain. I don't know of many figs, personally, that have such a like a moderate berry flavor and then also have a really uh, apparent in-your-face melon flavor. It's kind of, in my mind, like eating a, a cantaloupe with some strawberries 
and a little and a little bit of fig in there. It really it's kind of more melony than anything, I think. And usually when these figs ripen, they kind of lose those melon tones as they go, as they ripen, um, and they start to develop other flavors. And as the sugars increase, that melony, you know, note goes away. But this one retains it. And for me, it's it's also quite dense. The nectar is very dense as well. Uh, oddly enough, it's thick through and through. It's huge. It's got you know just a lot of great things going for it. And uh, yeah, I think because it's unique, but it also tastes so good that it's just uh, I think hard to beat and uh, should be talked about more. The uh, other figs that I could definitely mention, I could probably have a long list in all honesty of figs that would probably go in this in this in this blog post, but I had to stop at some point, right? We got to stop this video at some point, but. You know, things like Rosalino and Campanieri and Blanche de Saison, the Adriatic type figs are also really special. Borges Soak Grease and Violet Support and Socorro Black are all kind of the same fig. And Del Zermaton's a really big favorite of mine that um, you could, I could certainly have made a blog post on this and felt very comfortable about it. Pastelier, Ronde Bardot. Ronde Bordeaux is like eating candy, um, kind of a lot like the Rosalino and the Moro de Caneva. They're both, they're all three of those are kind of like fig candy, I think. There's Albo, which has a unique flavor profile to it that I love. And maybe even you could put in LSU Huye in there and Sucret and even Neruccio de Elba, which I didn't even list. But uh, Neruccio de Elba is quite a, a nice tasting fig. And you know, there's probably so many figs here, guys, in the future that I'll be able to maybe even add to this um, as we get further along of trialing these different varieties. It's amazing what we learn. And, you know, most of the varieties I've said have been really tasty, have stayed true uh, for the future. You know, um, even Italian 258, which is not really on this list, is still a very, very tasty fig. And I would put it probably slightly ahead of Black Madeira, you know, um, or in the same category. So, yeah, I want to thank you guys. If you're interested, check out the other videos I mentioned. Check out this blog post. Hit that subscribe button for me. We'll see everybody soon. I hope you guys are going to get to eat some really tasty figs uh, next season. All right? Take care, guys. We'll see you soon.